I am embracing my inner vampire this morning, as you can tell from my super white arms. <laughs> my name is Sean. I am the Melanoma Mom, and I've started this channel to catalog my journey of what it's like to live a daily life after having melanoma skin cancer. So this is my diagnosis story. <laughs> Welcome. Here is my melanoma removal scar pretty large. This is a new biopsy that I'm getting ready to have more taken off of it. This is an old biopsy. Anyways, in January of 2021, I went to see my gynecologist. Yeah, this story starts out with a with a girly appointment. And it was my annual physical. And she said, I don't see anything that's worrisome, but have you ever been to a dermatologist for their full body skin cancer check? I said, no, should I go? And she said, well, I don't see anything that is worrisome, but you're 40, <laughs> so it's that time. You need to just have everything checked. I was like, okay. Normally, I would have just brushed off the appointment, but every year I set a, a word of intention that kind of guides my choices throughout the year. And my word for 2021 was health, that I was gonna put my health first for the first time as a mom you all understand that I have two kids I have a 13 year old and a three year old and I pretty much have been letting myself go ever since I was pregnant with my three year old so three and a half years I've not been putting my health first at all 2021 is the new year to do that right so I scheduled the skin check and went to that appointment didn't know what to expect hadn't even googled cancer full body skin cancer skin check. Make sure you Google that before you go because they really um, do check you from head to toe. So I went and there was a spot on my back that I wasn't concerned about. The dermatologist said this one looks a little odd. Four little dots and four little white dots but I'd had it there forever. Wasn't concerned about it. It was like in the middle of my back. And then he said he was concerned about this one. I think it was this one right here looked a little odd and then I just happened to mention one that was over here now mind you it wasn't that big it was probably this the size of this one maybe a tiny bit bigger than this one right here but it was dark and I had noticed over the past six months I swear it was getting darker and I was like I can't tell if it's just me or is it tanning as my arm tans? Because I like to wear a lot of tank tops and <clears throat> we had just moved to a new city that was on the coast. And so I had been displaying my arms um, out for the world. <laughs> so I couldn't tell. But this one was darker. It looked different than all the other ones. And he said, well, it doesn't look concerning to me because it was flat. One, it was flat. It had pretty even edges. It wasn't scalloped or anything but it was slightly darker than all the other ones. But he said, because you've noticed a change in it, I'm just gonna remove it. It's probably nothing. About two and a half weeks later, I get a call from the dermatologist and him telling me that I had melanoma skin cancer and it was this one right here. When you are told that you have cancer, one, I had never done any research. I was like thinking, well, this sounds serious because it's got the C, the big C word in it, but I don't know what that means. Like, how serious is this? I didn't even think to, answer, to ask those questions. I was just like, oh, okay, great. Thanks for letting me know. Um, and he said, he said, you need to come back in immediately and I'm going to refer you to a, to a melanoma specialist, an oncologist. I was like, Okay, now this sounds serious, but I didn't even know what, what questions to ask. So we hung up the phone, and that's when I started doing research and went down a rabbit hole of fear. Um, I was probably severely depressed for the next 10 days. I was paralyzed by fear. I thought I was going to die. I thought, like, all the worst things come into your mind. I started crying because I was thinking... I'm gonna leave my kids behind and how horrible is that for my kids to not have a mom my daughter's three she's not gonna remember me I went down of you know everything I read said people had like six months to a year to live I had known somebody who had melanoma skin cancer on the heel of her foot and um, it was so bad that she had to go through chemotherapy and she was told she only had six months to live now she did she did beat that 
um, and she's still alive today. But so all of these fears are racing through my mind. Somewhere along the way, my the pathologist who um, looked at my spot in the microscope, she called me and or I called her, I can't remember. And I asked, well, how serious is this? She said, it's very serious. There's my daughter. <laughs> yes, get a Barbie. <laughs> okay, can you let me finish filming? <laughs> Thank you, sweetie. Do you need anything? I do. What do you need? Um, uh, I have a school. <clears throat> so I asked her, and she asked me questions, and she said it was a level three. Okay. So got off that phone call. Level three stuck in my head. All I heard was three. And so I was thinking level three was the same as stage three. So then I was really freaking out. So then I'm opening cheese. It's for my daughter. So then I was really freaking out. Thinking, I mean, stage three cancer, that's really serious. Well, come to find out later, it was actually Clark level three and it was a T1A. Now, there you go. Now, I still don't understand all of what it means. I keep having to relook it up. It was actually a level one and an A. So, I mean, that was superficial spreading. It wasn't that deep, but it was 0.37 millimeters. So, my dermatologist told me that if it had been 0.3 millimeters, then they would have removed it at his dermatology office. But because it was 0.37, the seven made a difference, then that's when they referred me to an oncologist because they weren't sure how deep it was going. They could see that it was, you know, spreading on the top, but they weren't sure how deep it was. And they felt more comfortable having a surgical oncologist who specialized in melanoma do that. So I was referred. Um, all the stuff that goes through your mind, you hear information, and then it's, like, hard to try and process it. I'm hoping my story help some of you out there who have fears to know that it is completely normal to have every single fear run through your head. It's completely normal to be paralyzed for fear. It's completely normal to hear information and not be able to process it. Um, if you can take somebody with you to your appointments, they can kind of help process the information you are receiving and help you to and hear because I don't know what it is. I think fear paralyzes our ability to retain information. That's my theory. I cried a lot. I cried a lot. This was all happening in like the first <clears throat> 10 days after diagnosis. And they scheduled my surgery for February, which was about three weeks, three, I, I might be a little off here, three to four weeks away from my initial diagnosis. And I thought, if this is that serious, why, why is it taking this long? Um, I don't know. I think it's because mine wasn't as serious as other people's. It wasn't as fast spreading as other people's. I should backtrack a little bit. When they did the initial biopsies of my spots, they did a shave biopsy, which basically means they just take a scalpel and they they um, well they inject you with some numbing stuff, so you don't feel anything, and they just scrape off a little. They scrape the spot off, but it's not very deep. It's very shallow. After my diagnosis, they went back and they did a punch biopsy on this was a later one on this one and the one on my back, which is basically a cylinder metal tube that they twist and it cuts into your skin and they're able to take a wider margin and deeper so that the idea is to get clear margins so that there's no none of those cancerous cells um, so they're able to take out more and then it requires like two to three stitches which I have an appointment coming up I'm getting the punch biopsy here which can be another story I probably will yeah I'm getting one there I've got one under my arm here, a new one, and one on my stomach that's getting the punch biopsies in two days. I will follow up with a video on the scar and how that removal surgery went, and I'll follow up on, are you okay? Yeah. And I will follow up on um, any questions that you may have. Please feel free to ask me anything. Again, this is my personal experience. Everybody's experience is different, and um, I'm in a much better place, obviously. Um, however many months, four, four months from my initial diagnosis than I was those first 10 days. They were rough. Um, virtual hugs. <laughs>